Welcome to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Knowledge Series. In this series of videos, we will work through some of the key aspects of design for fire safety, starting here with a quick overview of the history of the impact of fire on buildings and their design. Most of us would be familiar with the famous city fires in history. The Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD burnt for six days and destroyed three of Rome's 14 districts and damaged another six. Constantinople, Bremen, Hangzhou, Utrecht, Munich, Amsterdam, Moscow and Oslo were significantly destroyed in city-wide fires. Lübeck in Germany was destroyed by fire three times. However, most people would cite the Great Fire of London first and foremost as one of the more famous city fires. Starting in a bakery, the 1666 London fire burned for six days and destroyed 13,500 houses. Surprisingly and fortunately, there were only eight recorded deaths. The spread of fire was attributed to primitive firefighting technologies compared to modern times. Under preparedness and the combustibility and proximity of buildings which allowed the fire to spread. Reconstruction focused on non-flammable materials. The building fabric and property were the focus of design for fire. As building technology and materials evolved, the problems around fire changed. The use of cast iron and glass in the mid-19th century transformed architecture. Civic infrastructure such as buildings and railway stations utilised the new lightweight materials to create new cathedrals as a product of industry. The spirit of the age was captured by the Crystal Palace, designed by Joseph Paxton to house the Great Exhibition in London in 1851. It was for its time a spectacular new type of space in iron, glass and timber, and designed and constructed as a rational, systematic and prefabricated system. Though non-combustible, steel and cast iron had very poor structural performance in a fire. The ductility of the material in even modest heat would reduce its structural performance significantly, increasing the likelihood of collapse and resulting in unpredictability and danger for those fighting the fire. The Crystal Palace was located to a new site to a suburban parkland on the southern side of London in 1865. Over time, the performance of iron and steel and fire was better understood and building practice moved forward to insulate the steel in a fire. However, the unprotected iron structure of the Crystal Palace and its large volume was a catastrophe in waiting and on the night of November 30, 1936, it was gutted and completely destroyed by fire. Design for fire up to this point was a quasi-science based on lived experience and know-how. Standards of adequacy were evolving but tended to focus on the building fabric, its combustibility and the preservation of property. A fire in the factory of the Triangle Shirtwaist Company helped to change our views of fire design from that of protecting buildings to protecting lives. The building that housed the Triangle Shirtwaist Company factory survived the fire and is still used today and forms part of the New York University campus. What was most shocking about the Triangle Shirtwaist fire was the large number of deaths of mainly working class women, many who were recent immigrants. The final death toll was 146, 123 women and 23 men. The high death toll sent shockwaves through New York's immigrant community and workers' rights organisations. The intensity of the fire burned many of the workers beyond recognition. The factory was situated on the 8th, 9th and 10th floor of the Brown Building and employed over 500 workers on average. It was reported that the fire started on the 8th floor in a scrap garment bin under one of the workers' machines. The fire spread quickly, however the absence of a fire alarm meant that workers on the floor above were not aware of the fire until it spread to their levels, 
resulting in precious lost time to evacuate the building. Fire suppression inside the building was totally inadequate and the technology of the fire department at that time could not make an impact at such a high level. The main cause of the large death toll was attributed to the inadequacy of the fire escape. There was only one escape and the spreading fire damaged the poorly constructed stairwell which collapsed, rendering it unusable. The firefighters' ladders could only reach to the sixth floor and therefore most of the workers who did not escape were trapped and consumed by the smoke and flames. It was reported that 62 victims jumped or fell to their deaths trying to escape the flames. The tragedy of the fire led to an investigation and exposure of the exploitation of workers and the inadequacy of safety standards in such sweatshops. Overcapacity on each floor and the, cro and the close proximity of machines meant r resulting panic as workers tried to escape trapped many in the equipment. Changes to the fire regulations as a result from the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire resulted in some of the most advanced fire safety regulation in the, in the United States. The Triangle Shirtwaist Fire held the unenviable record as the highest number of fatalities in a building fire in, your, in New York up to the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. With sweatshops and manual labour moving offshore to lower wage countries, echoes of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire have been repeating through foreign run factories for international labels. Recently, the Tazreen factory fire in Bangladesh killed 112 workers in similar circumstances to those New York workers over a hundred years prior. In this instance, flammable materials were stored illegally on the premises, starting the fire. Inadequate escapes, many which were locked, overcapacity and inadequate escape distances, and even instances of managers telling workers to ignore alarms, all led to the extremely high death toll. So whilst buildings can be rebuilt, people cannot be brought from the back from the dead. Fire safety needs to focus on saving lives first and foremost, which is a combination of good design practice reinforced with management policies that reinforced fire safety. In the next videos, we begin to discuss the techniques and regulations governing fire safety and building design. Thanks for watching.